Welcome back everybody to the series on my channel where we do ELO comparison and I go up against someone stronger, weaker, or about the same level as me uh, and we solve training positions and you get to hear our thought process. For today's episode, we've got Eric Rosen. We are very close in strength. We've played many matches against each other. All that come down to a game or two at the very end. And he and I are actually going to be solving chess positions from the training database of the US Chess School, which is run by Greg Shahadi. These are normally confidential, just reserved for the youth prodigies of the United States, but I asked him for permission to use the positions but I'm also going to put a link in the description for you to donate to support the US Chess School and young, strong, talented players from the United States. The first half of our training will be in this video. The second half will be uploaded to Eric's channel. So here we go. Okay. Here we go. Good luck. All right. Um, Black wants this. <laughs> so here's the question. Whose attack is faster? Um, bishop h6 is an idea, bishop f6 is an idea, f4 is an idea, h3 to go f4 is an idea. If black plays knight, here's the question, do I need to go a4? Because if we stop black's main plan of a4 by playing a4 ourselves, that might be the way to go. Like, if we get this and then, and only then, we start an attack, we might be good. Because otherwise, a4 is coming. Yo, Alexa, quiet. Um, okay. sorry, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I always go way over, uh, Please. with these, but, uh, I, I'm, I was trying to keep it like two, three minutes. I, I can go first, then maybe for the first one you can start. Yeah, go first. So, the very first thing I noticed is black has no play except for a4, so it's mm -hmm. a very close position, right? And then, you know, black wants to play a5, a4. So the first thing I obviously thought of is a4, <laughs> um, to just prevent that. Uh, and then my other two candidate moves, like I really want to go f4, so I was thinking to go h3 to defend g4 first, and then go mm -hmm. f4, and obviously bishop h6. I very briefly looked at knight f5, but it seems far too speculative. Um, I think if you prompted me to play a move here, I would play a4. What about you? Yeah, I, I basically arrived at the same conclusion, um, where I think we're, we're not in any rush, apart from trying to stop black from playing a4 so it's basically pure prophylaxis the first move i wanted to play was h4 like usually in these closed positions you want to look at all the pawn breaks so oh, the, here, the potential let me, for let me invite you to oh yeah board. i'm just drawing arrows on my board but uh <clears throat> cool uh h4 so h4 I mean... h5 was it's just kind of a typical idea to to make some progress alpha zero inspired um but then, like, I, I realize there's no rush in doing that. Um, I very briefly considered taking uh, on f6, just because knights are sometimes preferable in closed positions. But right. um, because we have more space, we don't want to we don't want to trade and give mm -hmm. black more room to maneuver. Um, and yeah, I think like I think this position it's just about understanding what black's plan is, which is a4 bishop d7 doubling up and trying to like crash around the a file and when we play a4 uh we make it so i don't think black can really get away with taking because then we we take back and a5 is a weakness yeah i i was like trying to see if there were ghosts like you know a lot of people saying on passant like yeah of course to be honest if black gets nothing on this side of the board then i think black is just lost i mean just has a catastrophic loss of space all of this Strategically, um, yeah, it's just a really difficult position, and White has so many ways to improve. Um, actually, it surprised me a little bit that you were going, you want to eventually play f4, because I thought that in some way that can help open the bishop, but I guess that does open that file too. Yeah, well, I guess my, you know, my logic is like, okay, so if, if, I don't know, if Black does nothing and then we get f4, I think we're just crushing right because we just overwhelm but then again i said do nothing and they will do something um right like a4 and i was trying to evaluate if this is even scary you know but i i think more than anything else like i don't think they want to go a3 i think they just want like you said to, like they, leave the tension and build up and yeah yeah which is it's hard in close positions to evaluate like i i, I think you just go a4 here and even though it looks like you're overwhelming them, I think there's there, there's no reason you shouldn't do this. So, yeah. 
Um, and white but, can brought, white can probably afford to spend the next several moves just preparing, like bring yeah. the knight to a happier place, put the king on g2, rooks on better squares, and then go for the potential pawn breaks. Probably. So people are saying like, why not? I, so here's the thing. Here's like my mentality with moves like this. Um, if you don't have an immediate check or forcing move that just outright wins the game, I wouldn't do it. Um, you need like at least a few moves or if you're going to move your king and rook, don't just hope and pray. Like you should only sacrifice this much if it's guaranteed you're going to get something. Granted, it still looks pretty scary for black, but I think this is a very important move and all of a sudden you're the one that might be getting attacked. But I mean... Even that doesn't look so terrible, I have to say, like looking at it, but I think black has, it, it has enough, like bring everybody back. and. Yeah, I think from a practical standpoint, knight f5 is a move that you, you glance at, but you, you would rather keep in your back pocket for later when, yeah. when your pieces are, are just more prepared. And we should note this is not our, our typical like puzzle rush tactic where we're trying to destroy the opponent right away. Yeah. I assume this is more of a kind of strategic positional, like just kind of normal position. What would you do in a given situation? So uh, I'm ready for the answer reveal. Yeah. Let's uh let's hear it. So uh A4 is is the move. Uh, white is better on the king side, but black has the edge on the queen side and wants to play a5, a4. Therefore, white shuts down play on that side of the board first. And if black takes, then the pawn is weak on a5. And I'm, I'm very curious what the computer says. So a4 is the overwhelming human move. a3 is a secondary, but I mean, no one's going to play a3. And I'm very curious, how bad does it get if you play h3 and black plays a4 and you play f4? Um, wow, you can actually lose if you allow a4, a3. Because, yeah, as Ooh. you said, activating the bishop. So pawn takes and you're not quick enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're just not fast. Like queen f4, it looks like you're getting, but then bam, knight takes g4 and all of a sudden, uh, yeah, so you have to play a4. So... The prophylactic move, and, to, and it's just very important, like in close positions, you just have to look where your opponent's pawn play is. And yeah, yeah instructive line too, to kind of see how both sides of the board are interrelated, where if you over push on the king side too early, then you can get into trouble on the queen side. So I like this one. This was nice, kind of instructive, prophylaxis, patience. Okay, so training position number one, we've got a pretty good advantage on the king side. We want to start going forward, but we need to make a prophylactic move, this move A4 that you just saw, which anticipates what our opponent wants to do. Once we shut that down, uh, then we can kind of proceed forward with our plan. Now, this next position is probably the hardest of the training session that we did. Let's check it out. Good luck. Good luck. Dude, thank you for the gifted subs, man. You are out of, you are out of your mind. All right, guys, we need to get... We started sharp. Um, material completely equal. We've got some very good pressure. The first thing I'm thinking about is bishop takes, bishop takes, and like a queen move to hit the bishop, but I think f4 there disconnects the interposing. So that doesn't work. Um, bishop h5, f4, c5, pawn breaks. Queen d2 lines something up over here. Rook h5 to put some pressure. Rook h5 to put some pressure. Rook h5 attacks the f5 pawn. Black can defend it with a rook. We can play bishop to g5, queen g6. I really want to make this move work, but I just somehow don't believe in it. This and this is kind of tricky. Um, queen a4 is another move, like queen a4, queen c6, like trying to get in somehow. So yeah, I was looking at f4 yeah. and um, just trying to evaluate if this is helpful. Ultimately, if like if I had if I was pressed by time and had to choose a move, I think I would play f4, just because it it kind of locks a position. I think Black would be most likely to play e4. Otherwise, like we fix the pawn on f5, so the threat is to take and then um, target the f5 pawn. So. My my final thought was basically f4, e4, and then bishop e3 with some eventual idea of c5 or just kind of holding steady and 
Um, like it's not easy to figure out what to do as black in the resulting position. Were those the only moves you considered? F4 and... Um... Oh yeah, F4 also, I I was looking at King H1 for a brief moment of just like, just slow improving move, not committing to anything. Um, which maybe... That's interesting. I would also play in like a blitz game if I had low time, but... I'm not going to lie. So I, I had a completely different thought process. Ooh. So that, that that's what makes these fun, because that mm -hmm. first one was kind of like a warm-up. Yeah. Um, so I basically... So the first thing I thought, I just wanted to show everybody, like bishop h6 obviously doesn't work, but it is the first thing that you really should look at. And then, you know, there's just f4. Um, I threw out f4, like, immediately. Mm -hmm. um, my logic was that this position kills both of our bishops... Mm. And I think I would much rather have them go f4 themselves. And so that immediately drew me to this move. However, now that I'm saying all this out loud, they can still go e4. But then the question becomes, like, is it good or bad our pawn is here? And I, I, I kind of want to say it's good, because we still have the flexibility to move this. But I agree, like, I was looking at c5. I even went as far as to look at queen a4 like mm -hmm. some but that just looks stupid <laughs> uh i don't know that just looks really i don't know that looks wild and like the same with bishop h5 i wanted to park something oh and... yeah i looked at bishop h5 too like these single attacking moves <gasps> is it bishop h5 rook g3 Ooh, targeting G6. G6. I don't know. I it has to do with F5. Like for like I locked in Rook H5. I mean that's the move I locked in. Maybe I'll get it wrong. Um But it has to do with the light squares. It just feels very like we have the bishop, right? So there's gotta be a way to activate it. Like it's mm -hmm. maybe it's bishop b2 preparing f4, but that that's Actually, just I, seems... I do consider bishop b2 um one move I forgot to mention. But I, I quickly discarded it thinking that we want our bishop targeting or yeah. along this diagonal, but... Um, okay, let's see what the answer is, because this one we got something totally, totally different. It's F4, you're 100% right. <laughs> hey, let's go. So I'm curious, like, F4... Oh, hold on, let's see what the computer says. Well, computer is a terrible, terrible thing, and says, <laughs> Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my god. Uh, why? But but it says F4 later, so the, uh -huh. the central theme is F4 now. I'm very curious, but why? Why, why? Oh, because then you can do this. Oh. Okay, that I didn't see. That's something oh. you should see before you play F4. Oh. That's a nice little tactic. And Rook H6. Oh. That's overworked. <laughs> Oh, brutal. No, I didn't yeah. even begin to see that. I just this evaluated. This is a nice kind of combination of positional chess and then the tactics associated with changing the structure. Um, and th this makes it so you don't need to play bishop e2 preparing f4, but you, you make it so bishop e2 is then a, a really strong threat. Wow. Yeah, tactically speaking, yeah, bishop b2 and rook h6. Wow, that's really nice. It's really funny. I just completely misevaluated this position. I was like, ah, mm -hmm. my bishops... Well, once but, you started saying that too, like the both bishops are kind of sad after the, the transformation, <laughs> I, I started thinking, oh, f4 is probably not the move. <laughs> I'm but. curious how bad rook h5 is now. Like, is this just <laughs> a stupid move? So e4, and I guess the drawback is, yeah, there's just this knight e5. That's what I was saying, like, as we were analyzing. I'm like, you know what? You kind of convinced me. Like, this pawn in f4, as much as I don't, I didn't like it in front of my bishop. Restricts a knight. Yeah, yeah, it, it actually it makes a and lot of one sense. One thing that's nice about this position, which um should also address, is a queen is very short on squares. It can't easily move to g6 or f7 because bishop h5. So makes it so bishop b2 is even stronger because you're, you're taking away squares from the queen. Wow, f4, e4, bishop b2 is very nice. Um, I mean, computer is even so savage. It thinks that black has so little activity. You can just play g4 wow. now and actually just go like this. It's just not afraid of this at all. That's crazy. That's, yeah, that's very computer-like. <laughs> because I guess uh, black is just too slow.
Eric was completely accurate on this one, uh, and I just wasn't. I just misevaluated the move entirely. So I admit defeat on this position. Very nice pawn break. Second position in a row. We see a nice, important pawn move. Let's go to position number three. Okay. All right, y'all. Uh, we got to do a better job this time. What does black want? What does white want? What does black... It's king h1. It's f4. Last time it was f4. Got to be f4 now. Yeah, so, like, knight d5 looks excruciatingly obvious. It just looks like a very good move. But I don't know how to play these positions. So, here's a question. Could it be... Mm, bishop f2 is wrong. I wanted to go bishop f2, knight to e3. I want to put my other knight on d5. The problem is that bishop h6 for them is very strong and seemingly very annoying. So if this breaks c5... And if pawn takes bishop f4, the rook is just trapped. Like c5, rook d8, what, just double up? I have to say, that position looks absolutely miserable for black. I'm really tempted to play the move c5, but like I have to be so certain that it does the job, you know? But maybe c5, just bishop f8, and I... But then I can... Um, yeah, th this one I I was pretty confident like after a minute in, and then I spent the whole time just kind of staring at at the same move. But I'll let you go first. Yeah, me too. I'm curious. So obviously, I mean, first thing I th I, th I thought about was uh, was knight just d5 because it. I mean, it's just a very pretty move. Uh, but it. I mean, first of all, we. It looks like we just came from there. So. What are we doing? Like, it looks like Black just played Rook C8. We had Knight D5. We went Knight B6, Rook mm. C7. So sometimes the Knight comes from A4, but yeah, you're yeah, you're possibly right that. Uh... And I was like, okay, this is like a secondary option, Knight D5. Uh, by the way, you can toggle. You, I don't know if you toggled over to the other board, but oh, I was drawing arrows on my board, but uh, okay, now I think I'm good. Yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute, can we go C5? And I haven't convinced myself there's anything wrong with this move. Of course, dc5, bishop f4, and I, I vote for c5. <laughs> yep, same thought process for me. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a very typical Marazzi mind type move, is to like, especially when your pieces are really well placed. Mm -hmm. I was making the note black is a bit, um, a bit lacking harmony with the rook here, or the rook just doesn't have squares. So c5 is positional because you want to induce a weakness on d6, but it's also tactical because you're potentially trapping the rook. It's, um, it's funny because I thought I thought maybe allowing um, black to open the position, like maybe there was something I was missing where black can sack a pawn and get very active. Mm -hmm. Just give this away, but move the knight and then pin me and... But I didn't see anything, and uh... I was spending the whole time trying to figure out like how can Black respond to C five, trying to find reasons to reject C five. Yeah, but... yeah, which is very important, by the way. We actually take that for granted, mm -hmm. like as titled folks. Um, you know, we spent the whole like three minutes convincing ourselves what was wrong with this move, rather than being like, oh, you know, we're so smart, um, which is very important. Like, I think people need to realize that you need to really look at. Right, like, knight d5 was good, but c5 is better. Like, there was nothing wrong with knight d5. But I think you need to evaluate what's better and then ultimately, like, try to disprove yourself. Like, I can't, you can't really disprove the move knight d5. It's just a move. I, I looked at knight d5 and just didn't see what to do after rook c8, apart from maybe just repeating. Mm, yeah, like, and then, you know, you're not going to brute force your way in here. Like, you need to make... You need to break apart the opponent's guard... Yeah, with a with, with a pawn break, and I checked the answer, and um, a C five white will weaken the black pawn structure, and black cannot capture. So, mm -hmm. and curious. one more note is in this position, um, if we ask ourselves like, what does black want to do? What is black's next move? Mm -hmm. I think it's knight d seven, just yeah. to try and relieve the tension. So C five is very timely. Like we don't want to waste a move like playing king h one. We want to strike when black is not prepared. So the benefit that the two of us have uh, of this position was knowing the pawn structure. We know that that pawn structure is a Maroxy bind. Uh, and white always has a little bit of a space advantage, but needs to find the right way forward. And for the third time, it's an important pawn move moving forward. But of course, that other knight move that you saw in knight to d5 also was pretty good. 
But this one was more or less straightforward. I mean, White's got a good position, just needs to now take it over the top. Pretty interesting that we were basically completely on the same page throughout. But let's see what happens in position number four. Okay, good luck. Good luck. Okay. What is going on in this game? I have a fat center. P-H. P-H-A-T. Fat center. But this queen has to go. Uh, and I want to push my pawns. So the first thing, I mean, they're not threatening anything. Because everything is good. Now, h4, h5 is just terrible because black gets the g4 square. So I start looking at pawn breaks f5, e5. Now, e5 looks like a move a degenerate would play, but I am very much a degenerate, so let's calculate it. If bishop takes, I take check, then I take f3. But then queen f4, and I'm probably just losing. So e5, we can discard basically immediately. Not to mention uh, bishop uh, here, but knight also to d5. Which makes me think either f5 or one of the knight moves to remove the queen. It's definitely not a queen trade, because after takes, takes, rook d3, I can eat my own socks. Some people are into that, though. Um, so probably it's this, because this move just looks stupid. So probably it's this, and that kicks out the queen. The queen has to go to d7. In fact, there is no other move, because if it goes to d6, e5 at least comes with a fork. If I push... They take. So I'm thinking here, queen d7, rook e3. Or here, queen d7, f5. f5 right away also looks like a good move. I actually haven't found a refutation for it. But part of me thinks it's just wrong, because they take, I win a queen, but that's not how you have to calculate. Like, I think if you just allow the queen to drop back, or even allow the knight to get to e5, that looks absolutely dreadful. But certainly f5 is, has merit, although actually g5. Wait a second, f5, g5, and do I just suck at chess? So for sure this, and then after that, for sure this, and then, and then, and then, I would probably play on the, either the diagonal with a queen c3 or queen b2 to paralyze the knight. You gotta be set up right. You can't be throwing a punch with your feet like this. You need to... Doing. Hey, I'm I'm back. Well, you were making some interesting expression with your hands. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I was well, uh w what I will describe uh, explains my answer more or less, but uh, uh but I'll let you go first and then I can explain. Okay. Okay, so um I spent most of the time just looking at one line. It's just a two move sequence to improve things. Okay. And it looked pretty comfy. Um, which is starting with knight c2. Okay. And like I pretty early on said, I, like, this is a move I would play in a bullet game because mm -hmm. you, you just chase away the queen and you get initiative. But then looking into this deeper, it's pretty forcing. Looks like black has to retreat to d7. If queen d6, we have e5, which should be good. So knight, oh, I'm in the wrong board again. So knight e2, mm -hmm. queen d7, and then I just wanted to put the queen on the long diagonal. I wasn't sure whether queen c3 or queen b2, but the point would be to, to pin the knight on f6 and tie down the king with, um, with looming ideas, um, potentially e5 or f5, but uh, just looked like a nice way to build a pressure. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, the first thing, obviously, you calculate... Well, I don't know, the first thing I was just kind of saying out loud is like why e5 and f5 just don't work at all. I'm very curious why f5 doesn't work at all. Uh, so I, I actually, I spent a little bit of time on this. I was right. I'm very happy with myself. So, no, oh. no, g5. Oh, interesting. G5. That's... Yeah, I, I realized, I thought about knight d7, but I was like, why would black even allow us to take? Because I, I agree, like I was like, oh, you know, knight e5, but... Yeah, I'm very happy I actually found this. So th there's layers to like these puzzles, which sometimes can... G5, it's, it's a type of move it's sometimes hard to consider because it looks weird. But once you see it, it makes a ton of sense just to close the F-file and, um, the dark and eventually control the square. Yeah, yeah the dark, dark squares. squares. Right. And um, now knight e2 actually is not good because of queen d6 this is the the most mm. important thing about this position is the dark squares is that since you have so much on light you have to play this move fast so that here you have e5 which also you don't have in the initial position because obviously this position just 
sucks for for like I didn't even calculate this. Yeah, I just but, this is the first thing I showed to chat. I was like, you can't just play e5 because people would think I get two pieces for the rook. Like, because you know, nine times out of ten, I don't know, I don't know what number would you tell beginners two pieces are better than a rook? How many times out of ten? Uh, I, I say I say eight, eight out of ten. Yeah, most positions, even if like usually it's two pieces for rook and pawn. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, it's two pieces for rook and two pawns. But yeah, yeah, generally, especially if it's still like middle game, then two pieces just overpower a rook. But in, in this case, like, of course, you have to take into account the various factors like king safety, yeah, peace harmony, black is like really well placed, has the two additional pawns to safer king. So yeah, yeah, the, um, have like to be careful E5, with generalizing. E5, I would, I would, I would of course never play, but sometimes I'll also just like appease the general audience. Like, why not lurch in and take with check? It's so good. But then, um, again, I think like sometimes we'll, we'll take something for granted. For example, here, like the move queen takes f4. Like that's, I mean, you know, the queen just moved there and it's free, but it can be very difficult to see that this far out. Because in the initial position, at least, this is protected. So, um, but it's, uh, it's, yeah, e5 is not possible. And I was just happy that I found that after f5, there is this move. It's apparently the only move. So, so what's, like, what's terribly wrong with knight d7? Uh, I think just the opening. And then mm -hmm. if, if Do here... Do we still go for knight e2 eventually? So, like, let's say takes, takes. Um, I was actually thinking f takes. Ah. That would have rook f8 to try and defend the knight. I don't have access to the engine, so uh, I'm just I'm playing on field here. Okay, then knight e2, queen d6, and uh, yeah, rook f1. And okay, I mean, yeah, the, the, the computer is like white is better, but mm. uh, it's still definitely a, a game. Okay. But I guess it's, it's just, you know, at least I have something to play for, but so mm -hmm. does black. Like, it feels like maybe rook f8, knight e5, I mean... Yeah, and the thing the thing with f five like it's not the most practical. It's also a bit anti positional too. Like when you have pawns, especially neighboring pawns like e four f four, you just you keep them as is to maximize square control, and you only push if it's like clearly achieving something. Yes. Um. um well, now to explain why I was waving my hands around, I said that like this move is uh like if a boxer threw a punch out of uh, mm. out with the with the feet not set, um, you're not like yeah. Ninety two is one hundred percent the right answer by the way. So like just to clarify, like one of these moves, queen b two, queen c three. I think queen b two is officially the right answer. I don't actually know if there's a di there really is no difference. The um, small difference I, I was seeing is after queen c three, we might not be threatening e five immediately because knight d five hits the queen. So I thought queen b2 might be a safer option, but it's, it seems good in both cases. It's funny because I my oh, and you want to go e6. Wow, you're yes. mean. Um, but e5, they can take the rook. And then we take, oh, I guess we still get this two pieces for rook scenario. Yeah, I thought f5. Just yeah. bulldoze that file. And well, then... the thing is, we just, we just kind of enjoy the position. Yeah. And calculate yeah. whether e5 or f5 will work. Yeah. But yeah, f5 combined with rook f1 because f5 is going to open. And then in, in that case of g5, we have knight h5 added yeah. bonus. I was, um, I think in this position, the first thing I actually thought about was rook e3. I don't know. It just felt like I wanted to push d4 for a second because mm. that also looked nice. And uh, I, I mean, the machine is suggesting some really bogus things. It's suggesting h5, which uh, mm. I did not consider admittedly. But it, it, it goes to show you that this plan is actually wrong because there's <laughs> there's this which destabilizes the center. So yeah, you have to focus on queen c3. And yeah, I, I also came to the conclusion that this one subtle move completely kills black's position. So on the surface, it might have seemed pretty easy for us. You know, you got to take one step back with the knights, okay, to retreat because you kick out the queen in this position and then you can kind of avalanche forward. But as you saw from the analysis, like... If you just lunge forward with the pawn to try to attack the enemy king, there's a weird way that black can create a blockade on the opposite color complex because we would have put three pawns on light squares 
and that would mean that the other color complex, if we have three pawns on light squares, means that the dark squared complex is weak. And that is the way you should approach chess positions. That's the way, like, the, the more intermediate and advanced that you get, you've got to approach the position in that sort of way. But other than that, you kick the queen out, the pawns just go rolling down the board, and um, the position sort of solves itself. Now, as I said, if you've made it this far in the video, I love you as always. Thank you for the support. Uh, the second part of the training will be uploaded to Eric's channel. I believe I'm uploading my part maybe a day or two earlier than he is. Uh, and that's about it. Let me know if you want me to feature any other guests on this, um, on this series. Uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Peace!